Welcome back developers. Did you know that all blockchains are not built the same? In fact, today there are four main types of blockchains, including public, private, hybrid, and consortium. In today's video, we will see why there are different types of blockchains and the uses for each one of them. I'm Jack, and on Eat the Blocks, we help Web2 developers get into Web3. The first type of blockchain technology that we're going to talk about is called the public blockchain. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum originated here, removing the problems of centralization such as security and transparency. Without centralization, these blockchains need a method for verifying the authenticity of the data. That method is a consensus algorithm, whereby participants in the blockchain reach an agreement on the current state of the ledger. The two most common methods right now are proof of work and proof of stake, with Ethereum currently moving from the former to the latter. Public blockchains are completely independent. If the organization that started it ceases to exist, the blockchain will still be able to run, as long as there are still computers connected to it. A prime example of this is Ethereum Classic. When Ethereum hard forked, many people still wanted to use the old Ethereum network, and thus it is still running today. Another advantage is transparency. As long as the users follow security rules and methods closely, the public blockchains are mostly secure. However, there are some disadvantages. One of these disadvantages is speed. Public blockchain transactions can be slow and each time a new node is added to the network, it slows it down a little. Another problem is that hackers could technically gain 51% or more control of the network, and this could allow them to take over the network. All right, so the opposite of a public blockchain is a private blockchain. The advantages of a private blockchain are full privacy. It focuses on privacy concerns. They also have higher efficiency and faster transactions. When you distribute the nodes locally, but also have much less nodes to participate in the ledger, the performance is faster. And there's better scalability. Being able to add nodes and services on demand can provide a great advantage to the enterprise. On the flip side, the disadvantages of private blockchains include the controversial claim that they aren't true blockchains. It's also more difficult to fully achieve trust in the information since centralized nodes determine what is valid. You can also not be anonymous on a private blockchain, and the source code is often unviewable so it's hard for users to make an audit on the actual technology underneath it. In order to pick the best elements from public and private blockchains, some organizations combine both. It's called hybrid blockchains. By setting up a private permission-based system along with a public permission list system, organizations can control what data is accessible and what is not. A hybrid blockchain usually does not make its transactions public, but a smart contract can allow access to the information when needed. The network keeps confidential information, but it is still verifiable. It is not possible for a private entity to alter transactions in a hybrid blockchain, even if it ends it. One of the big advantages of a hybrid blockchain is that, because it works within a closed ecosystem, outside hackers can't mount a 51% attack on the network. It also protects privacy, but allows for communication with third parties. Transactions are cheap and fast, and it offers better scalability than a public blockchain network. Some of the disadvantages are that this type of blockchain isn't completely transparent because information can be shielded from the users. Also, upgrading can be a challenge, and there's no incentive for users to participate or contribute to the network. All right, so the last type is a consortium blockchain. This is a permission-based network governed by a group of organizations. Splitting the control up over multiple entities rather than just one, like private blockchains, allows for more decentralization and security. In comparison to public networks, consortium blockchains are usually more scalable and highly efficient. These blockchains also offer access control, like hybrid and private blockchains do. The disadvantages are like private blockchains. They can still be compromised if a small amount of their entities are breached. The high amount of regulation in this style blockchain can also end up impairing its core functionality. All right, so that's the basics on the four different kinds of blockchains. As you can see, there are trade-offs for each style. If you want to learn more about the use cases for blockchains, click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.